All right, tell, tell me why I asked you to do this today. For the benefit of my grandchildren, mm -hmm. that they would be interested in, this, in these stories 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Yeah. And I'm just glad, hopefully, that I can provide them because they are significant to me because I consider them very interesting. <clears throat> After having driven, driven limousines for over 10 years, I think that I got the best of the bunch of them as far as stories are concerned, especially concerning celebrities. Okay. Well, um, what's the, the first story you think is probably the best? I came in on a Sunday night in June of 2000 after my last trip which was around 9 o'clock or 10, 10, 9 to 9.30 at night and I was exhausted because I had worked a long day because at that time the company that I worked for, Regency, was the smallest company in western Pennsylvania of its ilk and we eventually grew to be the biggest but this was at the early stages and everybody was new and Tom Tom Miller, who was the owner, was wary about giving me trips the following day when I had worked late the night before. So he asked me, do you want to do Pete Rose? And I think everybody, most everybody knows who Pete Rose is. He's the, he's the all time hit leader in Major League Baseball history, history, but was surrounded by many, many controversies during his career, after his career for that matter, and I'd like to tell you that story. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, tell me the part of the story about when you Tom first hired you and he said his number one rule was, do you remember? Yeah, he said his number one rule was never engage <laughs> the customer, the client, the passenger which it took me until I met my first, until I met my first passenger about 30 seconds to break, uh, if that. All right. Okay. Well, and never me. honored once following <laughs> that for 10 years. Okay. Tell me the Pete Rose story. So he, he gave me this trip sheet, which is the official paper for a trip. And he said, do you want to do this guy tomorrow? So he had an edge on me because I was a sports freak having played myself. <clears throat> and it wasn't that bad. It was, I had to pick Pete Rose up at the airport at 10 o'clock, take him to a place called Fallen Timber, which was a golf resort about 35 miles from the airport, drop him off. He was playing in a benefit for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and pick him up again at 3 and take him back for a 4.30 or 5 o'clock flight, uh, flight at the airport. So prior to that night and prior to, the, to meeting him the following morning, I was trying to think of an icebreaker to just, because I was nervous, and I'm sure he wasn't. <clears throat> so I thought, because it was booked by a national f booking firm, but I was, I could say my, uh, almost anything I wanted to say to introduce myself. And this is the first surprising thing about, about the whole story. I, I spotted him coming down the escalator at the Pittsburgh Inter International Airport and I had the perfect introduction. He had been my brother's neighbor in Cincinnati for eight years when he was playing with the, with the Cincinnati Reds before being traded to Philadelphia. So that was going to be it. And so I went over, when he got near the bottom of the escalator, to extend my hand and introduce myself, and he already knew who I was, which I couldn't understand. I said, what do you mean you know, you know who I am? You have, you've never met me or seen me. And the thing that amazed me, which I had heard before referring to him, that he said, yeah, I've seen you. And I said, when have you seen me? He said, I saw you play basketball against the University of Cincinnati when I was 18 years old at the Armory Fieldhouse at UC. And you look 
about the same, except you had red hair then instead of gray hair. And this totally amazed me that he would have a memory like that. But as the trip continued, he amazed me 20 more times with, with his statistical memorizations. He remembered every pitch. He had 187 home runs in his career. But he remembered every pitcher and every pitch, what the pitch was. He had his opinions on everything as, as far as baseball was concerned. For example, there's been, there's always, there's always uh, controversies. Well, who's the best ball player? And he played throughout the late, well, he threw the late 60s, all of the 70s, all of the 80s, and I think he played somewhat in the 90s, which I'm not sure of. And without a, the bat of an eye, because he knew by that time that I was a baseball fan, he said, well, when I tell you who I think the best baseball player I ever saw was, <clears throat> you're going to be surprised and probably think I'm crazy, because he knew by that time that I had seen them all, Mays, Mantle, uh, Hank Aaron, who was my favorite, Clemente, where I grew up in Pittsburgh, Frank Robinson, and many others. <clears throat> and when he told me who he thought was the best ball player, again, I tell you, he thought I was going to consider him crazy. But when he told me, I did think he was crazy. <laughs> until I began to think about it. And his, his choice was uh, Mike Schmidt from the Philadelphia Phillies. And if you really break it down, he's pretty close to all the other ones that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Did they play together? Were they on the same team together? Yes. Yeah, Pete played with with Mike Schmidt when he was tra traded after his years with Cincinnati mm -hmm. to the to the Phillies. So it made sense to me. So be, because he recognized me after because of my basketball experience, he was my buddy now. So when I got him in the car, I told him a story of mine that that we had in common <clears throat> and uh, it involved my daughter. I, in 1976 I was I was working as a as the sales director at the Chatham Center Hotel in Pittsburgh which is which is now the Marriott having changed hands and in <clears throat> In September of 1976, Elton John was making his first, second, I think, second tour of the United States, and he was appearing in Pittsburgh at the Civic Arena, which is directly across from my ho the hotel that I was working at at that time. And the the day before he was there, the night before. And of course, the afternoon before his concert. So in the middle of the afternoon, my wife called me. And she said, Ned, I read in the paper where Elton John is, is at the arena tonight. And I said, yeah, he's staying here, I told her, that he was a guest of ours. And she said, my daughter was seven years old at the time. And she said, could you get Beth? his autograph. <coughs> Excuse me. And I said, I don't know. I said, I, all I can do is go up and knock at his door and give him some kind of a story and see if he'll sign the autograph. Which I did. So early afternoon I walked up to his, I went up to his room and knocked at his door and he came to his door in his, in his uh, bathrobe. I introduced myself and said how thrilled we were to have him as a guest, being an international superstar that he was, blah, blah, blah. And I proceeded to tell him that I, my daughter, who was seven years old at the time, was his biggest fan in Western Pennsylvania. And would, would, he be kind of, would you be kind enough to sign an autograph for her? 
And he said, I'd be happy to, but you look like an athlete to me. And I said, yeah, I have a background in sports. He said, would you do, would you explain something to me? And I said, if I can. And he said, I want you to explain what's going on on the telly. Which I went in and the Cincinnati Reds were playing the New York Mets in the National League Championship Series. And he asked, a fight had broken out between Pete Rose and the shortstop for the Mets, Bud Harrelson. And he asked me what was all the confusion about. He was totally, totally confused about the violence that he could witness. You know, Pete Rose throwing this guy around the infield like a rag doll. <clears throat> and he said, just explain to me what... Plus he didn't know the rules of baseball. He didn't know the rules of, ba of baseball. and he, His sport was soccer. And he said uh, he didn't know that baseball was a violent sport. And I said, it's not normally. He said, well, what's going on? And I said, Pete Rose is probably the best player in Major League Baseball right now, but he's very, very competitive. And a lot of people resent the way he plays because if they think his opponents, a lot of visiting fans, they feel that it gives him an advantage. And apparently what happened after having heard the broadcasters explain why it was going on, <clears throat> Pete Rose apparently hit a single to right, and the right fielder bobbled it. So any chance he ever had to take an extra base, he did. And when Bud Harrelson caught the relay from the right fielder, he kept the ball in an open glove, which is an old trick, and just slammed it into the side of Pete's head. And a riot broke out between the two of them. And it was at that point that I walked in the room and heard the description and I explained to him, well, Pete Rose is, is probably the best player right now in Major League Baseball, but he plays very, very competitively, mostly too hard for his opponents, and they'd resent it deeply, so apparently what, what Doug Harrelson was doing was trying to just get even with him by that little gesture, which Pete didn't take to very well. And you see the result of it, they're both being thrown out of the game. And it was a big controversy. Oh, Elton John said, thank you very much. I understand now that there can be riots in, 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 in a peaceful sport such as baseball. I said, yes, there can. And he signed the autograph. And I left the room, end of story.